Well, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benoa Otu, coming up this afternoon. The Afuenga Catholic Hospital in the Volta region runs on uh, fees charged at the morgue. In other top stories, NBC's Johnson Esiodun Ketia chastises Vice President uh, Baumia for using what he terms fabricated data in attacking former President Mahama. Coming up in business. Union, Ghana Union of Traders Association has noted the lack of collaboration with intended beneficiaries of the 600 million city stimulus package for SMEs will only mark its efficiency. And on the foreign front, UK government to introduce a 14-day quarantine for anyone arriving in the UK uh, from any country apart from the Republic of Ireland in response to the corona pandemic. Also, those were our top stories. Let's look at our very first story now. And the Afuega Calic Hospital in the Volta region runs on fees charged at the mark. This is due to pile up debts owed by the National Health Insurance Scheme. The Anfuega Catholic Hospital is the major referral center in the North Guy district and one of the six facilities supervised by the Christian Health Association of Ghana in the Volta region. The National Health Insurance Scheme owes the facility nine months arrears, a situation affecting the smooth running of the hospital. The coronavirus pandemic has also reduced the number of patients that visit the hospital for care by about 60%, thereby taking a toll on the facility's finances. Medical consumables and non-consumables are not easily acquired while projects being undertaken have also stalled. A theater constructed to support surgeries has not been fitted after completion about a year ago. Medical Director Dr. Richard Soglo said the 300 capacity mock is now the hospital's savior. Our income is locked up in uh, national health insurance which actually is not uh, paying as we expected. So it has put a lot of strain on the facility. Our mock, especially that have been of immense support, the, the mortuary actually generates most of the income that we use to support the facility. Uh, it has not been easy because we have a lot of people on our IGF uh, payroll which we have to pay. Personal protective equipment to fight COVID-19 is not available. We don't have enough. We've been purchasing most of our PPEs. And uh, because of the advent of the COVID-19, the prices of most of the items have shot up. And it has put a lot of financial strain on the facility. The Anfuega Youth Association, with membership from home and the diaspora, has supported the facility with some PPEs worth 24,000 CDs. The gesture is the first of two donations to be made this year. It is a matter of uh, agency and we are not in ordinary times as our president rightly mentioned. And so we the youth, both home and abroad, have decided to come together to make this beautiful donation to the hospital. The Anfuega Youth Association has also prioritized education in hard to reach communities in the wake of the COVID-19. COVID-19 has, has woken us up to our responsibility towards our community, particularly those of us who don't live here. We are working elsewhere and we try to mobilize ourselves to come home and give back to the society that we came out of. Meanwhile, the district chief executive for not dying. Kujo Atta has pledged the Assembly's commitment to complete the stalled projects at the hospital. Even though the Bosome Frehon district is yet to record a case of COVID-19, the district health center is ready for any eventuality. A holding center is currently being constructed to help contain any case before referral. With over 4,000 cases recorded in the country, Busumi Frenhun District is one of the few administrative districts in the Ashanti region yet to record a COVID-19 case. 
the health district director SNM Francisca said education on social distancing and other safety protocols have been intensified in the district. She also said a holding center is being constructed with the help of the district assembly. This assembly has been very so much supportive in all issues concerning health, even as more especially in this COVID-19 pandemic fight. They've provided most of our logistics. Regional directorate also in there, always ready to support us with all the needed logistics. Meanwhile, one of the MPP parliamentary candidate aspirants, Akwasi Darkon Boateng, has donated some PPEs worth thousands of Ghana cities to the health directorate. The government cannot do it alone. So each and everyone has to support the government to fight this coronavirus. So I brought this as um, a token to help fight coronavirus. On Thursday, May 7, Head of Public Health at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Bedu Sarkodi, said Ghana has reached a peak of its COVID-19 infections, but will need stronger adherence to preventive measures for the infection rate uh, to decline. But a virologist at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research into Tropical Medicine, Dr. Michael Ousu, says Ghana has not reached its peak in the COVID-19 case count. The KCCR has tested over 40,000 samples since April, and I'm joined on Skype uh, by our Shanti regional correspondent uh, who is there live to give us updates. So, uh, you, you spent some time at the KCCR yesterday. Uh, what exactly did you observe? Well, so you see, I observed two things. Right. One, when they are talking about backlog, it depends on two things. One has to do with the samples that have gone through the process and still waiting for results to be processed by the PCR or the polymerase uh, chain reaction, which is the current method that the uh, KCCR is using. Then the, another aspect of the narrative has to do with the samples that have arrived at the facility that are yet to even go through the first stage of processing, okay. like the uh, biosafety level three, I uh, mean, uh, laboratory, um, which um, receive the samples and then process them. That's the first stage okay. of processing the sample. So when they say there's no backlog, what they meant was that there were no new samples that were coming from other places of interest or, I mean, other health facilities or the um, holding or the isolation centers. But then they still had backlog of samples that that were yet to be released. I'm talking about results. New, that new were ones are released. released, yes, from the PCR. So, for instance, if you go to the KCCR, what is happening is that they've tested over, they've processed over 40,000 samples. Um, what I can tell you is that we still have about 15,000, I mean, results that are yet to be produced by the PCR. So it's still there. So that is a backlog. But I can also tell you that they still now they have a new backlog because two days ago, 1,002 um, samples were brought from um, other places like um, apart from the northern region, uh, KCCR is serving the other regions in the northern sector. So okay. Bono and all of that, those samples were brought. And yesterday, a sample was also brought from uh, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. I wouldn't be able to tell you the number of samples that that particular bus contained, because I don't want to um, use any hypothesis. <laughs> we just want to deal with real exactly. <laughs> people are very much so much interested in real time results. So I wouldn't want to know. We're still waiting for them, for the KCCR to come out to tell us as to how many samples were received from Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. I was there, so I saw it. Okay. So now they are about to process another 1,002 um, excluded the confinement samples that were brought. So that is the backlog at the moment. Well, so yesterday uh, you spoke with uh, Michael Owusu. He is a virologist uh, at the KCCR. And then he says we have not uh, reached our peak, as uh, uh, Dr. Bedu Sarko, the Ghana Health Service, uh, said. Uh, on what basis did he make that uh, statement? So now let's use, I mean, the demand curve. 
I mean, I know you've done economics and all of that. <laughs> it rises to a certain level, then it reaches a, a certain apex, then it begins to fall again. Okay. So what they meant was that we have reached a certain level as far as case count is concerned. Now we are beginning to fall. If we are beginning to fall, what it means is that then we are not recording any new cases. Okay. But that is contrary to what I saw at the KCCR because more cases are coming. And they, still, they even have a backlog of cases or results that are yet to be released to the public domain. So now we are talking about over 4,000 uh, uh, results that are our case counts. We still have uh, over 15,000 results that are yet to be produced. So there's a possibility that all things being equal. Okay. If uh, two or I mean quarter of that particular sample test positive, it will add up to the 4,000 um, cases that we we have as a country at the moment. Now we have also mentioned the one from Confanoche. Hypothetically, again, forgive me. Let me use hypothesis. If they are if if the, 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 some some of the samples within that particular box also test positive, it will again add up to the number of cases that we have recorded. So we are not seeing a decline as far as our case count is concerned. Rather, we are seeing an increasing number of positive cases in, especially, I, I will talk about the Ashanti region. The hot spots, yeah. Cases, yeah. As far as the Ashanti region is concerned. So that is what he meant by mm -hmm. we haven't reached our peak. Our peak but yes. again, he said maybe the uh, director of public health was trying to caution the public and also adhere to the safety protocols well and um, try to juxtapose that to the reality on the ground is a bit complex to understand but this is this is uh, medical terms and maybe they understand the language but what we do know as far as the ashanti region is concerned ashanti region hasn't reached a peak well um, evans before i let you go so you said that they still have about 1002 case um, yeah. exactly so um did you get any information as to when they will be releasing uh, this information all right so we are talking about a week or two because the pcr method that we are using at the moment takes two between two and six hours for a, a sample mm -hmm. or for results to be produced okay so you multiply that by a number of cases or the number of samples that they have and i was told that sometimes you take 48 hours for a sample for results to be produced so we just we just want to hope that um, um, they'll be able to work around the clock because at, at the moment they are operating a shift system um, more or less if you like 24 hour service that is what they are doing at the kccr so we are just hoping by the close of next week we should be able to get those results but don't forget that we still have results backlogged um, in an excess of fifteen thousand that are yet to be produced to, um, to, 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 to the public domain. So we're still waiting for that result against the, the, the backlog, I see. Well, so Evans, in all of this, you're being told that we have to take all the, uh, uh, the precautionary measures, wearing all the face masks, and uh, sharing fiscal or social distancing and all that. You have been touring uh, parts of uh, the Ashanti region. What would you say to that? Are people adhering to all these uh, protocols? Absolutely. I mean, there has been so much improvement when it comes to adherence to these safety protocols. Uh, for example, I'm just coming from town and I can tell you that every space that you use, mm -hmm. you're likely to see somebody selling the face mask. And I can also tell you that now I am beginning to see the more quality one. I mean, uh, those recommended by the FDA and of course the um, health experts. Uh, the only that is very expensive. For instance, I bought one and it, it is going for five Ghana cities. So you ask yourself how many people will be able to get or be able to raise that amount of money to buy. And it, it, you can't use it more than a day. I mean, after some few hours, you have to discard it. Mm -hmm. So in as much as yes, I mean, there's, we are not seeing some level of scarcity as far as um, those masks and all of that are concerned. The price in the room will also scare off people. So I believe that going forward, maybe the government will have to do something, maybe subsidizing it, because we are talking about Ashanti Reddy, which has also a number of people who belong to the abject poverty category. Mm -hmm. So something has to be done so that everybody can afford it. But when it comes to people's response to the social distancing and all other WHO protocol, I think it's been very impressive, you see. 
Thanks so much, uh, Evan Sinkum, for the updates there. We are grateful to you. And stay, still stay there. Uh, we'll come back to you subsequently uh, for more. This is still Midday Live with me, AC Benewa Otu. Let's do other stories. An virologist at the uh, Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research into Tropical Medicine, Dr. Michael Osu says Ghana has not reached uh, its peak yet. Uh, he told TV3 after the KCCR received some 1,000 samples less than 20 four hours after the peak claim by the Director General of the Ghana Health Service. Here's a report by William Evans Incom. The KCCR has tested over 40,000 samples since April. 1,000 new samples were brought from other regions in the northern sector including the Bono region which has recorded its first case. This very one is coming from the Okonfanochi Teaching Hospital. The moment it gets here, even before it gets to the main laboratory, it has to be disinfected just to ensure that there isn't any contamination. So that is the process that this particular box currently is going through. Uh, everything is done meticulously. Samples are sent to the Biosafety Level 3 laboratory to begin the process of testing. The staff work round the clock under a shift system to meet timelines. The use of polymerase chain reaction PCR method means a sample can last between two and six hours for real-time results to be produced. The PCR is two to six hours and with the increasing numbers uh, you can see that we are now taking over 48 hours to release results, which is not uh, the best. Uh, actually, if you look at WHO protocol, the PCR is supposed to be used for active case detection. For people who are symptomatic, they have disease, and they go to the hospital, then you can do them for PCR, because you want to determine the active viral circulation. But the antibody-based test helps a lot in understanding the true burden of the disease and how far the disease is, is moving through the population. The obvious reason for continuous backlog, but has Ghana reached its peak as claimed by the Director General of Health Service? The best of my understanding, if you have reached your peak, it means that the majority of your populations have been infected by the virus and therefore the level of infection or transmissibility is beginning to go down so you can, re you can relax measures and move on. But from what you have seen, we are still testing a lot of people and it's possible that as more samples come in, we are going to record increased number of new cases. So I'm not too sure. I don't think that the population has already reached a peak. If you reach a peak, it means that the new cases you get will begin to go down. But the new cases we are getting will be more as we test more. Dr. Owusu says the rapid diagnostic test kits developed in Ghana could accelerate the testing regime. The RGT is one kit that, that would be good. Especially we should not expect that it will be 100%. The point is that no kit is 100% effective. There will have to be a trade-off between the sensitivity and the specificity. And once you are able to reach some marginable specificity and sensitivity, you are good to go and to try it on the population to see how it is. So the RGT is, is going to augment or going to complement what we are doing. So, Let's still stay on COVID-19 and matters arising. The Noguchi Memorial Research Institute is investigating the delays in the communication of COVID results. The institute, after clearing its backlog of samples, says it is best placed to deliver results in 24 hours. Dr. Kofi Boni, a senior research fellow, says the institute has begun researching into other fields relevant to COVID-19. Noguchi's mandate is actually to do uh, biomedical, it's a biomedical research institute. It is not a testing center. Uh, so one of the mandates is to provide specialized testing to support the health service. And that's what we are doing. Specialized testing in the sense that the kind of testing we are doing, the public health labs may not have the equipment to do it. That's why they bring it here for us to do. So we are not meant to be a testing center, as it were. We are supposed to do research. So it will give us more time to concentrate on the research aspect of our work. This is a podium of the Noguchi Memorial Institute. Initially, when the backlog hadn't been cleared for 
samples of COVID-19, you'd have seen them packed here on this floor. But because the backlog has been cleared, you can't see them anymore. They have all been taken up to the laboratory for processing to begin on these samples so that people who are looking forward to their test results can receive them in time. And so that is what it means when we say the backlog has been cleared. According to him, clearing of the backlog is expected to enable the Institute to process COVID samples within 24 hours. We have cleared the samples, but it's not all the results that have been sent out today. Now when we come in, then we concentrate efforts in trying to do the part that is yet to be complete. That is making sure that the results that are yet to be sent out, everything goes out. Then that means we are done with what we so then we talk about 24 hour processing. So we come because there are fewer samples. We come in in the morning, uh, research assistants will get in there, pick the samples that are there few. They will go through all the processes within 24 hours. Uh, the results will be even given out within that 24 hour period. He added the institute has begun investigating the delays in the communication of COVID results. So now the efforts are being channeled to that area making sure that the results that are lagging, some people have not received their results in a week. I mean, some people call and they said two weeks, but that one is kind of a, something that we don't usually do. So we try and investigate. The results actually gets to the directors because these are brought in by the district or directorate. So the results are given to the directors. So we always encourage people to get to them to send their results to them. We don't give individual results. Unless there are special cases that you or you have contacted them, they can't find the results and all that. They will get back to us, we we'll go into our data and we search whether truly we are working on it and we we'll give you the results. The Institute currently receives between 2,500 to 3,000 samples a day. Ten Togolese nationals who illegally entered Ghana have been repatriated. One of them tested positive to the coronavirus. The Ghana Immigration Service in Afla repatriated them, handing them over to Togolese health and national security officials through the Afla border on Friday. Here's a report by Komla Kluche. The 10 illegal immigrants entered Ghanaian territory on March 27, 2020 through an unapproved route in the Bono region. They were intercepted at the Duadaso police checkpoint. They were isolated upon arrest and tested thereafter. One tested positive with nine negative. After seven, their compulsory isolation, the Ghanaian security officials repatriated Ten of the Togolese nationals, a team led by one Lieutenant Mahinu Rock from the Commission for COVID-19 in Togo, received Mandanaku Kujo, whose putto tested positive. Mandanaku Kujo was transferred into another ambulance, parked at the Togo section of the flower border, whilst the other nine were driven on board the Bono Regional Coordinating Council bus into Hotel Ibis in Loma. The immigration service says it is bent on ensuring no illegal immigrant enters the country whilst the borders remain closed. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Aplau. In other news, the Ashanti Regional Communications Bureau of the National Democratic Congress has refuted claims by the Roads and Highways Minister Kwesi Amwakwata that the NDC led by late Atta Mills and former President John Mahama did not contribute to road infrastructural development in Greater Kumasi. Addressing the media in Kumasi Regional Communications, Officer Bas Nuruddin said the NDC has constructed not less than 400 kilometers of road in Greater Greater Kumasi alone. Uh, Greater Kumasi Metropolitan Area, DKMA, as we refer to, between 1984 and 1988, benefited from 110 kilometers of asphaltic overlay roads. Nothing has been done to Kumasi roads, at least for the last 14 years. That is why greater attention is being given to these rules. This claim, according to the NDC, is false. The Mills Mahama government alone constructed more than 400 kilometer stretch of roads within the greater Kumasi metropolitan area. And these 
are the details. 18 kilometer stretch of road was constructed in the Tafu constituency alone in the Mills Mahama administration. The Asokore Mampon municipality. 25 kilometer stretch of road was constructed in the Asokore Mampon municipality during the Mills Mahama administration. Early, the roads minister was being mischievous just to conceal the good works of President Mahama in the Ashanti region in the wake of mounting criticism of the Kufuado government for failing to do anything in the area of roads as far as the Ashanti region is concerned. On the Sofaline interchange project, the roads minister is said to have claimed since former President Kufo left office, the NDC did nothing to complete the project. Abbas Nuruddin had this to say in reaction. At the time the MPP left office in 2009, less than 10% of work had been done on the sofa line interchange with no definitive source of funding when ndc left office in 7th january 2017 phase one of the sofa line interchange project was 85 percent complete that is about 75 percent of the sofa line interchange project that is the overhead itself and the dual carriage road from centreso to turn or so were funded by the Mills Mahama administration. The Minister of Roads and Highways at a media briefing announced that financial arrangements for the construction of four interchanges in Kumase were currently being discussed, but the NDC claims it is a mere political talk. Because elections are coming, hence the Kufuado government must create a certain false sense of high performance in the road sector in the Ashanti region just to assuage the anger of the people who have vowed to vote to vote him out. Enough of the tokenism, enough of the left service, the Ashanti region deserves better from the MPP. In a related development, General Secretary of the Opposition National Democratic Congress Johnson Asiedu Nketiah has taken a swipe at Vice President Mahamudu Baumia for his obsession with attacking ex-President Mahama with fabricated data. Speaking on the key points, the General Secretary of the NDC also rebuffed criticisms about delays in announcing the NDC's running mate, insisting the, their main opponent, the NPP, does not even have a flag bearer. But Director of Communications of the NPP and MP for Adentan Yao Buabina Samwa maintained Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia was spot on in his criticisms against ex-President Mahama. The thing about NPP is that if you ask them a difficult question, they avoid that question and set their own question and answer it. All that Dr. Baumia set out to do is to ask his own question and answer. He wasn't answering the specific allegation that President Mahama raised, which was that the government has been engaged in cooking figures. And that is, they present a set of figures to the parliament and present a different set of figures to the IMF and our development partners. Every party has a way oh, of managing its affairs. Definitely. And uh, otherwise, MPP will not be concerned that we haven't announced our running mate when they don't have a flag bearer. <laughs> they say they do. They don't. They, they don't have they a flag bearer. They don't have a running mate. They have about 150 parliamentary mm -hmm. seats to fill. Mm -hmm. And yet they divert people's attention onto our running mate. It is not about the parameters of the crisis. He is comparing leadership, the skills used, the approach, and the ability to manage and move forward. That's what he's comparing. And he's saying that given a crisis, the kind of crisis you had, you failed. You didn't exhibit leadership capacity. You didn't exhibit quality enough to overcome it. And people died in doing so. People died in surgeries. People died in, uh, 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 what do you call, fires that broke out from generators. And people died. So you shouldn't assume that people didn't die. But what Dr. Baumia is saying is that, were you able to constructively lead us out of them?
that some customers of the electricity company of Ghana are yet to benefit from the relief on tariffs due to the outbreak of COVID-19. While a number of customers have seen the benefits, it is yet to reflect on the bills of some. Ajwa Edbia Owusu has been finding out what authorities uh, could, what could have led to this. President Akufuadu announced the absorption of the entire electricity bill of the lifeline consumers, while residential and commercial consumers were to benefit from a 50% discount of their bills from April to June. The three-month electricity bill relief was to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on businesses and households. But the implementation, which started on May 1, has not been smooth for some who have not seen the relief reflect in their purchase. I want to buy 50 cents and I didn't get any percent or whatever. Others were also excited and reflected in their purchase as announced. In the month of March, I spent 160 Ghana cities on prepaid. And just this month, which is May, I went to the prepaid vendor and then paid 20 Ghana cities for prepaid. And after, after buying the prepaid, when I checked my receipt, I saw that I had a charge value of 100 Ghana cities, 21 pesos. First of May this year, we bought credit. We bought 130 cities worth of credit. So we're supposed to get 130, but we had 188. So an additional 65.78 credit was added to what we bought. Some vendors who refused to speak on camera said they lodged a complaint with the electricity company of Ghana but were yet to receive feedback. But the Accra East Public Relations Officer of the Electricity Company of Ghana, Isaac Innocent, has been giving some answers. We also realized that some of our customers didn't buy in April. So for such customers, they walk into the ACD vending point or the ACD stations in May and they didn't get the reliefs. Uh, we want to assure them that they should go the second time. Whatever is due them will be given. He has also been reacting to unexplained deductions experienced by some customers. For instance, if a customer is supposed to receive 200 Ghana cities as a relief, the system would calculate the service charge for, say, two months or three months, looking at the absence of a customer at the vending point, and then take out that service charge from what the customer is due. So some of them saw certain amounts of money as credit, but they went to their homes and they didn't see that because the system had to deduct the service charges for the previous months. The customer didn't go to the vending point. He, however, assured customers yet to benefit from the package, they will be compensated in their next purchase. Well, so that's good news to those who are not benefiting uh, from that relief. This is still Midday Live. Stay with us. We're back with business. Let's do business now. And President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association wants government to set up a committee involving executives of the business community in order to ensure a stimulus package of 600 million cities to evenly disperse to members. According to Dr. Joseph Obain, the intention is a good one, but the lack of collaboration with intended beneficiaries will only mar the efficiency of the package. George Coining reports. Of the 600 million CD soft loan scheme pledged by government to cushion the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on small school businesses across Ghana, it's expected to start this month. The National Board for Small School Industries says it has come up with products to meet the needs of industries through stakeholder engagement while the criteria for selection is also ready. The portal for the application is currently undergoing testing after which it will be opened to applicants. Applauding the initiative, President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, is asking government for more collaboration. Sharing 600 million with 200,000 people, then the average threshold comes to 3,000 Ghana cities, which is woefully inadequate, where it will not enable any trader, importer, or any of, of the sort to even um, assess this fund. So we want government to pinpoint 
where this uh, fund is going. So if this one is capturing those people, then they have to uh, tell how much is also coming to the trading community itself. Dr. Joseph Obin revealed how expectant members are, stressing the need for fair disbursement of funds. It's so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Even new associations that are coming and all that, and then associations that are all over the country and all that, people need this fund. People need this fund. I, I, I don't know, the, the number that is coming, the inquiries that they are making per day and all that, it is it, so... Uh, sometimes it, it, it gets to uh, even scary. <laughs> operating in Ghana's aviation space have cut down the number of passengers carried on flights in adherence to social distancing protocol. A 78-seater plane now bought 38 passengers, but fares have not been increased, reducing revenue needed to sustain operations. Airports have introduced measures to cater for travelers based on government guidelines. We just touched down at the Kumasi airport from Accra and my quest from Accra to Kumasi and back to Accra is to test the system and see if the COVID-19 protocols are being observed by the domestic airlines. At the entrance of the Kumasi and Accra domestic terminals, temperature of patrons are checked. They are then asked to use hand sanitizers. Clearly, certain arrangements have changed to protect domestic air travelers. Markings which lead to the check-in counters are to enforce the social distancing protocol to stop the spread of COVID-19. The planes are disinfected before passengers are boarded. Passengers are also briefed on COVID-19 protocols before proceeding to board a flight. Wearing of nose mask is also a must. A 78-seater Passion Air flight now seats only 38 passengers in adherence to COVID-19 social distancing protocol. Some passengers commented on the arrangement. They are done well because, in fact, when you see how we are sitting here at the social distance, they, are doing, they have been straight on us doing a very good job. First of all, I'm very glad that they are not thinking of the money they are going to get and they are thinking of our lives because... I know they are running at a loss. It's supposed to be two here right now, but I'm the only person, so I'm glad. And they have hand sanitizers at every spot that you get to. They check the temperature too, meaning everybody that's able to enter is safe. The reduction in the number of passengers on board a plane due to social distancing affects revenue. Samuel Techi is the sales and marketing manager at Passion Air. In the medium to long term, um, we we'll evaluate how much this is going to affect us and then... Uh, we see the way forward. He noted support from government to the domestic airlines is needed. We know one thing for sure that government has a vested interest in the aviation industry. Aviation plays a vital role in the economic development of every country. Or we expect uh, government to uh, take a, a lead in salvaging the, the situation. A financial analyst and director of business operations at Dilex Finance, Joe Jackson, noted support from government should help reduce widespread job losses in the local airline industry. The government should come in to support the airlines to keep some of the staff who be laid off by giving them support for a decent amount of time. The airline's costs have gone up because it is effectively every uh, uh, flight is a business class flight because of social distancing and other issues involved. Let the airlines increase their fees to represent the new normal and the new reality of airline travel. Like international air travel, it may take some time for domestic air travel traffic to increase. Iben Ajekun Watin, TV3, Accra. News returns shortly. In sports, Ghana forward Kevin Prince Barton says he is not done with the Black Stars and would fancy making a return to the Black Stars under new coach CK Akono. Barton, 33, who is currently on loan uh, from AC Fiorentina, uh, has been out of the national team since 2014 after he was sacked from the Black Stars camp by then coach Christian Pia during the World Cup in Brazil. What is your or what is your guys' relationship to Ghana? Yeah, my my relationship is 
it's, it's okay, you know, it's like sometimes I talk uh, to someone from back home, I ask about the situation now because uh, because of the coronavirus. Uh, I even I even helped without being a guy. I helped. I just wanted to help, and um, that's that's it. You know, we with the national team and everything. It went went in the wrong way. I didn't like this. Like I didn't like how it finished because uh, they gave me so much. But uh, but you never know. Maybe I can go back and play. Okay, one more time again. Yeah, or maybe you are assistant coach. Yeah, or I'll be the coach. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, best coach. <laughs> but but my relationship with Ghana is it's it's intact. Like I still still very yeah. close to them. Okay, good. An opportunity to be forward here now. Jan is on the right. He'll go for goal with a shot. What a start here, Kevin Prince Boateng for Ghana. Odion Egalo hopes his loan deal at Manchester United is extended until the Premier League season is completed. The Nigerian striker Feti moved from Chinese side Shanghai Xinhua in January and has a contract until 2031 May. Premier League bosses hope to resume the season in June, but with China's Super League also intent on a restart, Egalo may have to return to Shanghai. That's it for sports. Let's do it. The COVID-19 pandemic rages on and Ghanaian rapper and Edem uh, has reached out to health facilities assistance in the whole municipality uh, of the Volta region requesting assistance. Donating essential items to hospitals in Accra, Adam has shifted his attention to clinics in the whole municipality, requesting for thermometers, PPEs, hand sanitizers, and other essential items to help contain COVID-19. Facilities and communities including the Tokokwe Chips Compound, Alale Family Health Clinic, Taviope Demi, and Fiave communities received supplies. The beneficiaries were presented with Veronica buckets, gallons of liquid soap, packs of tissue napkins and bags of snacks. The Efear 4 composer is confident that gesture would complement government effort to contain COVID-19. And Takradi based rapper Aisem is speaking musician Sister Fia over Eno and Frida Rhymes uh, in the ongoing beef between the two female aunties. He said he is impressed with the punchlines delivered by Sister Fia and such beefs are good for the industry. <laughs> Sister Fia ignited lots of controversy after the release of her song MTW on April 22nd. Even though Sister Fia did not mention names, fans have concluded that she threw jabs at Sister Debbie, Wendy Shea and a Theodore in the song. The song has since seen counter jabs and reactions from Frida Rhymes' KMT and Eno's rap goddess. Commenting on the ongoing beef, ISM disclosed that his favorite so far was Sister Fia. My favorite so far is Sister Fia. You know, for someone like uh, Sister Fia, being a singer um, and then rapping like that, you know, like I was really, really shocked. And then, trust me, the punchlines in there was amazing. And then, big up to Sister Fia. The Takradi based rapper does not have a problem with beefs, and he stressed that beefs are good for the music industry. It's really healthy to me, if you ask me. I think that it's healthy. It's normal, it's in the game, it's part of the game. You know, beefs are part of rap games in there industry so i think personally um i love i love what they are doing and then they should keep it up if only it's going to last for a long time you know we are going to enjoy ourselves for a lot, very long time so they should just keep bringing it on so and that's all the news for this afternoon but before we part ways let's look at our top stories once again the Afwenga Kalik hospital in the Volta region runs on fees charged at the morgue NBC's Johnson Esiodun Ketia chastises Vice President uh, Baumia for using what he terms fabricated data in attacking former President Mahama. 
in business, Ghana Union of Traders Association has noted a lack of collaboration with intended beneficiaries of the 600 million uh, stimulus package for SMEs will only mar its efficiency. And in news elsewhere, UK government to introduce a 14-day quarantine for anyone living in the UK uh, from any country apart from the Republic of Ireland in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Always remember to wear your face masks whenever you step out and stay indoors when necessary when you have nothing doing out there. My name is AC Benoa Otu. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the day.